Okay, so let's go ahead and get started for today. Well, we last week started to take a look at basic animations, how to control them through auto key and set key. But now let's see another way we can go through to start to animate an object. Well, there's a few things we can do. Well, first off, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a sphere quick. And just to kind of see how things go, I'm going to go set key, frame zero. I'll set the key, move the timeline, move the object, set the key, move the timeline, move the object, set the key. And as we can see, it moves just fine between those points, just as we would expect for it to. But there is one other thing we can do. I'm going to go ahead and right click and choose show motion path. And now it shows me exactly where things are and when. And with this, with the move command, I can control, click on, and change how I want this thing to actually move. And in doing so, these motion paths are going to let this ball move and run in a slightly different method according to however I move these curves. Now, I can move the curves in more than one way. I can move them up, down, by choosing them, and then truly just moving their points from point to point. And I don't actually need the set key for that, because I just need to be able to see the motion path. So I'm going to restart, hit play, and now the ball can move in a nice simplistic manner. Now, what this does to the motion path from the curve editor that we can see, well, for the most part, it's not going to do really that much that we wouldn't already kind of expect. Because all this really did is change them from being simple ins and outs like we had before with this. That essentially makes it go from point to point. But this time... What it lets us do is add these curves that change the trajectories between the different edges, angles, points, and all of that. Well, this is based off of the idea that this is a curve. Well, this motion path, this curve, is what the object is going to follow. And we can use that to our advantage. So I'll get rid of that, and I'll get rid of the ball for now. So, what we can do is something kind of like this. So, what we saw before was a series of different platforms and boxes and things like that to allow our object to kind of bounce around from item to item. Well, I'm going to go ahead and do kind of the same things we did before for that initial setup. Okay, so I'm going to start up here. And I'm going to turn on my set key, frame zero. And I know I only have 100 frames, so I'm going to make it pretty simple and quick. But I'll just move about 10 frames, move the ball from place to place. Actually, you know what? I'll go start to finish and move the ball down here, set the key. And kind of like what we saw before, I'll go to each of these spots. And just to make things a little bit more simplistic, grab these straight ins and outs, at least for the moment. Nope, I don't think I got them the way I intended. Nope, that's because I missed one. Grab all of those, straight lines, okay. So about here, I'm going to want to move it down, touch about there, set the key, we'll keep going, move to about here, move it down, set the key, move it forward, move it down, set the key, move it forward, move it up, 
set the key. And we kind of have exactly what we need, but it's still not quite there. So I'm going to hit these midpoints, just simply moving them up in between each, so it looks at least a little bit more bounce-like. So when I zoom out just a bit, hit play, bounce, 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 and stops. So for this, what we have is the ability to see how all of this stuff is actually working. So I'm going to right click, choose show motion path. And what I see is exactly how it's moving at each of these different places. But now that I have this control turned on, what I'm going to do is actually go Alt W and I'm going to go into my side view. Well, I guess my front view. And I can see all of these different points. Now the keyframes, as you can see, aren't moving, only the position that we've given the object. So what I can do is click on these spots, move the trajectories around just a little bit, and I can kind of pull out and curve and change exactly how I want this ball to hit its different points. And this gives me access to changing a lot about how this ball is going to move, the speed it's going to move at, and other little things like bouncinesses, arcs, and so on. But all I really need to do is just kind of go through, smooth out some of these curves, change how I want it to look and bounce around. Because if I want just a quick hard bounce and keep going, something more like that for a condensed one. If I want more of an arc, I can pull them out. So I'm going to make these bounces just a little bit more condensed and hard hitting here and here. Move that stuff around. Move my last points down here. Change this arc if it'll let me. Nope, because I'd need another out. But now, I'm going to go ahead and go back to my perspective view. Hit play. And it's much, much better comparatively. Because I'm getting the hard hits at each of the points. And then I'm getting a nice arc from how it's moving. Now my speed is a little rough. So I'm going to go ahead and expand this out and rescale my time. So I'll choose rescale time. Overall length, I'll put it 300. So about 10 seconds. I'll hit OK. And now I'll hit play. And I can kind of see it do all the things I wanted it to do. Because the motion paths give the ability to see all these different little frames. That's what all these little tick marks are. Just the different frames it's taking to move and go from point to point. Now, that said, I can change this and move them as I want, being the keyframes to kind of help space things out just a little bit better. So if I need less time between something, or more time between it, I can now move these around to try to even out the space between all these different animations. And it takes just a little bit of getting used to, but what we really want to do is just kind of eyeball it, at least for this one, and try to even out the space between each of the different frames. Well, being even gives it a smooth movement, but one other thing we have to kind of consider is that on these arcs, it should be slower as it's transitioning up to down. So between here and here, there really should be another frame. So I'll set some keys here and a second one about here, just so I can kind of rework this in the middle. 
steps from there to there, it should be probably something more kind of like this. An even, kind of a bit more of an even control on it. To let it just kind of arc, hold its position just a bit. And take just a little more time between there to there. So if I need more time, I'm going to increase this, increase the spacing away from there. So it hits there, bounces up quick, slows down, speeds up, hits. And we have kind of the same thing here to here. So about here, I'm going to set yet another keyframe. And I can move this to kind of space out how fast I want it to hit versus its hang time for this transition. And the more distance I give between these, the slower it will be. So it will come up, come down, hit. This should be pretty quick. And just kind of back and forth. And by setting these different keys, and changing how much time I want in each spot, I can force it to give better control of the animation in each of these arcing points. Because if it should speed up, it should slow down, speed up, hit, and quickly move to the next spot. That said, these probably... I'll zoom in just a little bit. I do have one slight issue of this, where the ball is supposed to hit, but with this, I can move it up and actually try to line up those bottom edges pretty well. And I can do that at each of these different frames. So here's this one, move it there. I'm about halfway in, so this one definitely has to move up to hit about there. I'll also move this just so it's a little bit more steep for that drop for that angle. Comes over and way too far in. And I'll line it up there. Move this position up. Same problem here. Move it up. And I'm going to have the same problem there also. And as long as I kind of have that motion path, it'll be a lot easier to control, or at least grab onto, those points. Now, it's also easy to kind of go through, rework some of these spots, just kind of even out the things from before, and just go back and forth. But now that I've done this... I think I lost some of what I did. Yeah, it looks like I did. Not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. Okay. So, now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and go back to my perspective, rewind, hit play, bounce, goes up, slows down for the arc, down, slows up for the arc, and so on. While my angles might be a little rough between them, the overall point is there. But now, I've been able to change so much about this animation by just working with the motion path itself, that I can do so much more in control and to make a little bit more lifelike. Now, that said, I can also go through and do the auto keys to make things squish, go back into the motion path, and use those to kind of help me keep the timing that I would need to for those squash and stretch tools. But that'll be all for this video, so in the next one we'll take a look at the next thing we can do with these motion paths.